Welcome to this session of OpenMentor.net. This is again a continuation session towards software testing. Before we see software testing in detail, we need to see a subject called SDLC. This is nothing but software development life cycle. This SDLC is one of the key areas that anyone who comes to software industry, whether you are a developer, whether you are a tester, whether you are an implementation guy or a support guy, you need to know this. Without a proper foundation on SDLC, it's very difficult for you to understand all the aspects of software and the dynamics of the software industry. Okay, uh, let us take a typical word. Uh, or the phrase life cycle. Uh, you take a butterfly, you have some uh, egg, then uh, larva, then pupa, then the fly, right? Butterfly. So it goes through a metamorphism from one form to another form, but finally it reaches the final shape. But it takes time, right? Same way, if you take software, software also goes through a lot of stages. The essential principle of SDLC is software is not just the program. The software program or the code is not just the software. There are a lot of things that happen before and after coding. So the first and foremost principle is now is that software is not just the code. That's the first motto people need to know. The second fact people need to know is that many people are involved. It is not the success or the greatness of one person in the entire software preparation. It's a team. If the team works towards the goal in a structured manner, obviously the software will have a better quality. But many people misunderstand that developers are the sole responsible guys for software. It is not just developers, it is not just testers, it is not just support guys, it's the whole team. The third fact people need to know is process leads to perfection. Many times people try to circumvent the process unless you go through a structured approach stage by stage. It's not going to help you on a long run. Right? So, these three are the fundamental facts about SDLC. If you think that it is just the coding, if you think that one guy can create a lot more impact, it's not, it's not right. Maybe exceptional guys can do. Like the person who coded Pascal, like the person who coded Linux initially, single-handedly we can do, but it's not enough to provide that software to the whole world and then sustain that and then upgrade it. Right? Now, let us get into the actual meat and core of SDLC. I said phases, right? There are a lot of phases in software. If I start listing it, first phase is called inception right the second phase is called requirements the third phase is called design then uh, code or develop is the next stage the next stage is testing right then the next stage is deploy right then the next stage is maintain so, a software goes through all these stages one after the other, right? And 
there is a lot of things that happen in every phase. These lecture sessions are going to give you an inside look and outside look of what happens in these phases. Right? Let us first take inception phase. This is the very first phase of software. Many theory books may even forget this. I will tell you why this is not considered in many places, but this is the core. This is one of the important and vital phases in software. When is the software born? Critical question. When is it born? Some people here in this crowd in front of me say requirements or deployment. No. Need. The very thought of having some automation by the customer, right? Need arises for the customer. Customer may feel some pain in manual working or paper works or he or she may be having issues in integrating all these data. So a need, if a customer feels the pain and the need, software is just born on that day. After that the software just grows. The birth really happens the moment customer starts thinking of a need. Is this clear? Good. Okay, what happens next? Then, customer will draft some top level requirements. Okay, let us take a typical, let us take a government order. Okay, big, big time spending, right? Government needs a unique ID project. Okay. This is one of the key things that is going on in India. Getting a unique ID in US, people already have something called social security number SSN, which is a unique ID. Through that you can track all the people. You can track the financial records, you can track the employment record, education record, expenditure record, defaulting, criminal, every record can be accessed through social security number. Same way, let us say, see in India, they also try to have one number per person and then track through that. So, government felt the pain. It needs some unique ID for the citizens. So, someone has been appointed, a group has been appointed to a first draft what we need. Drafting that itself is the key, right? If you do not know what we need, then it's a problem. Then how can you tell another guy, oh, okay, give me this software? That's the first thing. This may take time, right? These committee people may have to talk to so many departments across the country, right? Okay, banking needs this number, census needs this number, water list needs this number, then passport needs this number, ration card needs this number, schools, colleges, employment, everybody needs. So, what is the need and what is the usage of this across various departments, portfolios of the government? So, someone has to meet all these people, put them on paper. That's the first thing. Then, there is a, a tender usually, yes. A tender is nothing but something, it is also known as RFP, which is also known as Request for Proposal. RFP means Request for Proposals, that means government will give notices in papers magazines, right, web, everywhere. Okay, government of India with this kind of uh, governance and act and so many people in the country with these departments, we need a project. 
this project will be used in such and such a manner. We are expecting this project to be closed in three years from today or from the start date. Suitable tenders, suitable proposals or quotations required. So this is given by the customer in papers, but this needs money, right? Whether it is government or private party, it doesn't matter. Newspapers required money. They want money to publicize or advertise this. So government starts spending or the customer, in this case, government is the customer. Customer starts spending. Look at this phrase, customer starts spending right money project starts for the customer the project might not have started for you but the project has already started for the customer the moment this is done right even government starts spending money or the customer starts spending money when they have to talk to so many departments travel stay the other set of people need to spend time, right? Salary for these people, everything is money. So government or the customer needs to open a separate account, start, and then it should start logging all the expenditure. So project starts for the customer. Now, there are many vendors, right? Or software development companies. There is a sales department that keep watching or hunting for opportunities. When I say opportunity, okay, if there is a need for a customer, okay, let us go knock the door. See whether we can deliver what the customer wants. So sales department starts looking at keeping eyes and ears open. So they see the newspaper, oh yeah, we got some opportunity here, let us go and then bet for this. So sales talk to internal departments in company, then they may need some clarifications, right? Many times just by seeing the tender on the paper, you may not even answer that or give an estimate. So you may have to talk to the customers a few times. Talk or meet customer to understand the need better. You might have already got some idea, but you need to get finer details on the customer. Once you get it, then the ball is on your court. You need to send a 